Putin still does not care about the numerous military losses in the army. U.S. General Retired U.S. Army Lieutenant General Ben Hodges assessed Russia's chances of winning the war against Ukraine. According to him, the current situation at the front is a fight of attrition. He said this on air at 1 plus 1. At the same time, he noted that despite the months-long absence of military aid from the United States, Ukraine held the front. Russia recognizes that they cannot defeat Ukraine now. They have no way to completely defeat Ukraine as long as the West continues to support them. So what Russia does is they pursue civilian targets, not caring how many innocents they kill, he said. According to him, the Kremlin does not even care about preserving the lives of its own personnel and is not worried about losses among its military. Hodges believes that a war of attrition is ongoing in Ukraine. As the general explained, Russia is trying its best to break the will of the Ukrainian people, as well as to make the West lose trust and will. However, there is one important point. If you think about it, there were almost eight months of no weapons coming from the US and Russia still couldn't defeat Ukraine. That's why I'm confident that Ukraine will actually defeat Russia, added Ben Hodges. He previously noted that Russia does not have the potential to capture Kharkov or Sumy. I think the Ukrainian fighters are doing a better job with what they have. Russia is just continuing its efforts, trying to overwhelm the Ukrainian fighters with artillery and these massive infantry attacks where they are losing over a thousand people every day. So I don't believe that Russia is capable of achieving decisive help over Ukraine, he added. At present, Russian troops are suffering heavy losses on the battlefield, particularly in the Kharkiv region. This is something I have tried to understand, but I do not understand it yet. It is obvious that the Kremlin does not care at all how many casualties they have. It does not matter to them, the Russian government has never cared about its casualties. Russian soldiers are tools for them to use and spend. So unless the Russian population decides that they have had enough, I do not think anything will change, Ben Hodges said. F-16s debut in Ukrainian skies, experts point out important details. Theoretically, the Ukrainian Air Force, after receiving the first American F-16 fighters, could launch up to a dozen aircraft at a time. However, as the Kyiv Post newspaper writes, citing analysts, the realities of wartime and the corresponding training of Ukrainian pilots will force them to carry out combat sorties in much smaller numbers. The typical optimal F-16 formation size is two to four aircraft operating together with an experienced pilot who is trained and qualified to fly multiple aircraft as a formation leader. The aircraft is configured to operate and is designed to optimize combat capabilities without the rigid and uniformed control of uninitiated personnel on the ground like the MiG-29 and Su-27, the publication says. According to Vadim Ivchenko, a member of the Vakovna Rada Committee on National Security, the first F-16s will arrive in Ukraine in July. I believe that at first they will be used to defend against enemy missiles and will not operate against targets in Russia. It is emphasized that the F-16 was designed for optimal performance in the air, not to be launched from unimproved airfields with grass and gravel on the airfield surfaces. Fighters require clean runways built to a higher standard than the Ukrainian airfields of the Soviet era. The F-16 has an engine air intake that can suck in ground debris. It was designed to fly from normally clean airfields that meet NATO and world standards. These low-mounted intakes also make them undetectable by enemy aircraft on radar at long ranges. The MiG-29 has protective ground intakes that redirect the intake air source over the wings to allow operation on dirty surfaces, a feature that contributes greatly to its large radar footprint. The publication writes, It is noted that operating the F-16 on Soviet-style airfields is equivalent to driving a Lamborghini or Ferrari supercar on a road that is better suited for a Jeep Wrangler or Toyota Hilux 4x4. Let us recall that the research fellow of the State Aviation Museum of Ukraine, Valery Romanenko, expressed confidence that the construction of underground shelters for Western F-16 fighters in Ukraine is impossible. A set of measures will be used to protect them. Ukraine does not have the ability to build new defensive structures now because it is very expensive. In addition, they are penetrated by modern missiles because several meters of concrete are penetrated. For example, Storm Shadow is capable of penetrating up to four to five meters of concrete and even iron. Thank you.